Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation EVGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be trying out the number one ranked team at the end of the November rank season. This team is just one of the strongest archetypes and one of the most dominant archetypes in the format right now, Tornadus Tailwind with Pokemon like Urshifu as well as Golden Go. However, what makes it a little bit more unique is that it has Landris Incarnate Form, which is not a very popular pick, but is one that is really good into a lot of Pokemon in the format right now. It puts on massive amounts of pressure with Earth Power as well as Sandseer Storm, and you've got Poison Terra and Sludge Bomb. And one thing that's really nice about that is a lot of teams will often go for a defensive Terra against teams like this, something like a Grass Terra, for example, so that you don't take super effective damage from Urshifu, but as a result, Landris is able to take advantage of that and puts on massive pressure with Sludge Bomb in particular. So I think it's interesting to see how this archetype has evolved throughout the last couple of weeks, and it's just not going anywhere anytime soon. And with this being the best team from the previous rank season, I definitely wanted to feature it. So as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below. And thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. This team was built and piloted by a Japanese player, Suika, who was able to finish number one at the end of the November rank season. It's really hard to finish the season with a high ranking, and so to be able to climb all the way up to the very top and finish as number one is a really impressive accomplishment. What's even more impressive is that another player actually used the team to get number two as well, and so it's just a testament to how consistently strong the composition is. It shouldn't be surprising, this archetype is one of, if not the most common archetype that people are using, but there's some tricks that this team has to offer that make it a little bit different from the traditional variants, including Landris Incarnate being used in particular. So yeah, just wanted to highlight the teams from the end of the ranked season. If you want to check it out, I'll link this down in the description below. It's compiled by a Japanese resource called Liberty Note. Breaking things down, as always, Rental, Pace, and Team Creator are linked down in the description below. And question of the day, I'm curious what's one Pokemon that just doesn't really seem to click for you when you try it out, even if it is objectively good and is something that other players might use a lot. Curious about your opinions down in the comment section below. Now, when talking about this team, first of all, I have to just highlight that this is just objectively one of the best archetypes in the format. It has so many tournament results behind it, and when I mean it, I mean Tornadus compositions in general. There's a lot of different ways that you can actually build around Tornadoes. For example, the team that won the Latin America International Championships had bulky Pokemon like Iron Hands and Amoongus on it. We've also seen variants that just use a lot of heavy offense with Champau and Fluttermane, for example. So a lot of different ways that you can actually support Tornadoes, but basically Tornadoes plus just four or five of the best attackers in the game is a ridiculous combination. It won the very first regional championship of this format, it won the Latin America International Championships, and with one month left of Regulation E, it's not going anywhere. So, when you play in a format that's heavily centralized around one of the top team compositions, what do you do? You either figure out how to use the top team composition and edit it to make it strong and to your fitting, or you figure out how to beat it. And so what Suika did was basically figure out a way to adjust the team and find a unique tech in Landris Incarnate form. So I want to start by talking about Landris. This Pokemon is not very high up in usage rates, and part of the reason for that is because it's not that easy to use, and that was actually kind of where the question of the day was inspired by. And the reason for that is because Landris is just not the bulkiest Pokemon. It is, of course, weak to Urshifu pre-Terra, so Surging Strikes can just knock it out easily. Forex weakness to Ice typing as well, which can be tough. But when used properly, this Pokemon is phenomenal. It is in a unique space in the format right now because there are a lot of Pokemon that take super effective damage from it. Just to name a couple, Iron Hands, Hisu, and Arcanine, Chi Yu, as well as Grass types that take super effective damage from Sludge Bomb, things like Rillaboom, as well as Water Ogre Palm before it Terras. One of the other really nice things about Landers is that it really capitalizes post Terra if your opponent can't make a defensive play around it. A lot of players against this team will go for defensive Terras in order to handle Golden Go or Urshifu, right? Golden Go, for example, often forces out a Steel Terra so people can survive Make It Rain. Urshifu often forces out Grass Terras to survive Surging Strikes. Well, Landris can hit both of those types for super effective damage, and so it can be a really effective late game sweeper if you're able to bait out your opponent's Terras early on. You're mainly going to be using Earth Power, but Sandsteer Storm is really nice, it's just not the most consistent move because of course it's 80% accuracy, but when utilized in positions where maybe your opponent has uh, redirection users, so you can use it to ignore redirection, or you just really want to get consistent damage on both of your opponent's Pokemon, it's an awesome option. 
Poison Terra plus Sludge Bomb just allows you to deal significant amounts of damage, and Poison Terra is also pretty nice defensively for Landris to use, so it is an offensive Terra that also kind of doubles down as a defensive option. Of course, with this team being a Tornadus team, we have to talk about Tornadus. Now, this is a Pokemon that basically actually has a lot of flexibility in EV spreads as well as item and move choices. And you'll notice that this Tornadus opts for a lot of bulk, you know, near max HP, max defense. You've got good speed investment here as well. This is valuable against those admin Urshifus. The Urshifu on this team is admin, as you'll see. And so you're able to speed creep opposing admin Urshifus and anything that reaches a couple points higher than that. The main thing to call out here is that you also have Protect on the Tornadus. Tornadus is a Pokemon that can run a lot of moves, right? You'll, for some time, for example, sometimes see Taunt over Protect. And Protect is, I think, really nice in best of one closed team sheet environment because you can just really catch your opponents off guard with it. And it also means that you can safely lead Tornadus without having to commit a Terra to defensively survive on turn one. Because against the non Protect Tornaduses, what a lot of players do is click fake out into it and then just knock it out with a strong attack, right? But with Protect, it means you can just lead something like Tornadus Golden Go, double Protect, and then Tailwind afterwards. You've also got Rocky Helmet here, which is just really nice defensively against Urshifu in particular, and can deal chip damage to other physical attackers. The next Pokemon to highlight is Nasty Plot Golden Go. Golden Go has made a huge comeback in the Regulation E format, and it continues to be super dominant. We see some players switch back to the Choice Spec Steel Terra variants recently, but Nasty Plot plus Dragon Terra is just a remarkable combination. It's really difficult to knock out this Pokemon quickly. Dragon Terra is really good defensively on it, and Leftovers plus Rillaboom Grassy Terrain is a nasty combination as well, because you heal back so much of your HP at the end of each turn. The general idea behind Golden Go is to just set up a couple of nasty plots and sweep through very quickly. And I think this Golden Go gives you a pretty big edge against uh, some of the other variants of this team that, for example, have Fluttermane over Golden Go. Because Golden Go is able to boost up a couple times and then just deal a lot of damage quickly. I also really like it against Trick Room oriented teams where they don't put on that much pressure in the opening turns. So you're able to get a couple of nasty plots off and then you can take the game over afterwards. Rillaboom here is fairly straightforward. It's just an Assault Vest set with Fake Out, Grassy Glide, Wood Hammer, and High Horsepower. The main thing to note here is that you're Fire Terra, and you've got a little bit of speed investment as well. Sometimes people will just run max HP, max attack on Rillaboom, uh, but the speed here gives you an edge against opposing Rillabooms that don't have speed as well as anything kind of in that range as well. Fire Terra here over Grass Terra, so it's nice defensively. You're not going to be using it as offensively, but Wood Hammer in Grassy Terrain, of course, still does remarkable amounts of damage. Hisu and Arcanine is a Pokemon that's won so many championships this season, it has dominated the format, and it's often paired on these Tornadoes teams because it's just not only incredible offensively, but actually can be a really good defensive pivot. And that seems weird to say because Fire Rock is weak to so many common types, but it's really nice to switch into, for example, against opposing Tornadoes, really nice to switch into against opposing Flutter Mains that want to go for its Fairy type attacks. And so I often will have Arcanine in the back, and if my opponent leads in a certain way, I'll pivot Arcanine in and then put on offensive pressure while also being able to soak up damage with it. The main thing to call out here is that you have Head Smash. The reason to use Head Smash is because Flutter Mains recently have been super bulky. A lot of people have been using like near max HP, max defense Flutter Main, even on uh, teams like this. And so the idea is with Head Smash, even though it's inaccurate, you can get a one hit knockout if you connect with it, even on the bulkiest of Flutter Mains. So that's a cool attack that can catch opponents off guard as well, because often people will be like, well, I've Eevee'd in a way to survive your other attacks, but then Head Smash comes out and just picks up a surprise one hit knockout, and that can blow the game wide open for you. Urshifu is the last Pokemon to talk about, and it's fairly straightforward as well. It's a Mystic Water set with Advent Nature, Searching Strikes, Aqua Jet, Close Combat. This is a Pokemon that's just remarkable, especially when combined with Tornadus. And you've got Rain Dance here on Tornadus as well to just further allow Urshifu to quickly claw through teams. And so, yeah, this composition isn't really anything new, but I do think the inclusion of Landorus gives it a pretty big edge against a lot of teams that are out there right now. And a single Pokemon choice can drastically change how compositions are played, but... When you want to use this team, there are a lot of different modes to think about. I first start by asking myself, okay, is Tornadus important in this matchup? Do I need Tailwind? Because if so, then I'm often going to be leading Tornadus and then building around that. Sometimes you might not want to bring Tornadus because your Pokemon are just already faster. That's mainly going to be in Trick Room matchups, for example, or maybe in matchups where your opponent just doesn't seem to have really good speed control and they don't have something that can just quickly overwhelm you. I, I, I say I bring Tornadus in most matches, but I first start my thought process with, okay, do I want to bring it? 
afterwards i build around it right so i think you could really lead tornadus with anything on this team tornadus and urshifu is just one of the most oppressive leads because you can just go for tailwind water terror surging strikes or rain dance water terror surging strikes but i think i really like tornadus landers tornadus golden go and tornadus arcanine as well uh, i think torn arcanine really good if your opponent has a lot of physical attackers and arcanine can catch your opponent off guard with something like a head smash uh torn golden go is something that i'll consider if i want to get speed control up for golden go immediately and my opponent doesn't have too much to threaten a dragon terra golden go early on Torn Landers is also intriguing to try to force out some Terras early on from your opponent. With this lead, I'll often kind of protect Landers early on, uh, try to bait out a Terra as they use something to survive something that Landers would otherwise hit them for super effective damage with switch out Landers and then bring it back in to close out the game afterwards. You can also consider things like Rillaboom plus Golden Go, fake out in a nasty plot, Hisu and Arcanine plus Go Golden Go, intimidate into a nasty plot strat early on, uh, and then go from there. So I mean, part of the strength of compositions like this is that they're just remarkably flexible. You're using just objectively some of the best Pokemon in the format, whether it be because of their base stats or because of their typing or because of their moves, and this team is no different. So uh, if you're stuck, though, I would say think about do you want to lead Tornadus and then figure out what you think is an effective lead with it. And like I said, I would consider leading Tornadus with really any of these. Um, and in games where you don't necessarily need speed control, things like uh, Rillaboom to, for fake out pressure plus any attacker, I think is really powerful as well. So that's it for a quick breakdown. So in terms of weaknesses, I think one thing that I have lost against is opposing Tornadus teams where they have a faster Tornadus with Taunt, because that can deny Tornadus from setting up Tailwind. And even though this team actually has a lot of speed on most of the Pokemon, you're not necessarily using like the fastest Pokemon, right? For example, a Fluttermane or a Choice Scarf Urshifu can apply some pressure. So that's just something to think about like i think when i go up against opposing tornadus i think about how do i stagger my tailwind and how do i knock out the opposing tornadus without first setting up tailwind and then going from there and protect is helpful against it but i've had games where i either get greedy and don't set up tailwind or my opponent has taunt and like opposing tornadus for example i'm not able to set up tailwind and then the rest of the pokemon just get a little bit overwhelmed by faster pokemon afterwards so that's one thing to think about Ice type Pokemon and Ice type moves are valuable into this team because Landorus, Tornadus, and Rillaboom are all weak to it. So, Champau in particular is, I think, actually a Pokemon that can be pretty good into this team. You have Counterplay into it, right? You have Intimidate from Arcanine, and you can knock it out fairly easily. But with Focus Ash, if a uh, Champau is well conserved in the end game, I think he can give the team a lot of trouble, especially like because it outspeeds so many different things and can pressure them with super effective damage, right? Ice Skull Crash on a Landorus and Tornadus, as well as Rillaboom, as well as Sacred Sword on an Arcanine or Crunch and or um sucker punch onto golden go i think golden go is amazing but the dragon terror is something that you can take advantage of so sometimes i've had players that cover for it by going for a super effective move that hits steel ghost and then going for a super effective move that covers for dragon as well and i've had games where i tear the golden go but suddenly it's weak to dragon and fairy and my opponents have been able to take advantage of that as well I think Trick Room can be pretty good against this composition as well, and there actually is pretty good counterplay against Trick Room, where you can set up with Nasty Plot with Golden Go, Rillaboom can fake out and change the terrain as well, but I think a really well-piloted Trick Room team, where you set up Trick Room and have your attacker out immediately, can give this team a lot of trouble, just because there's not actually that much bulk to work with with most of the Pokemon, and a Trick Room team with a lot of strong spread moves can quickly beat through a lot of these Pokemon. So, yeah, those are just a couple of things that I've noted. Let's get into these battles. Okay, Sinistra, Landorus, Empoleon, Iron Hands, Galaria, Moltres, and Fire Ogre Pond. Hmm. Landorus, Earth Power, and Sludge Bomb applies really good pressure here. I think we gotta worry about Nasty Plot, Galaria, Moltres. We gotta worry about Competitive Empoleon. Could lead Tornadus. Bleak Windstorm's decent here. I think the lead we need to respect most is Iron Hands plus Galarian Moltres. Hmm. Hands Moltres. I think leading Hisu and Arcanine is... It's interesting here. It's obviously risky into an Empoleon. But I'm a little bit worried about the hands plus Moltres lead. I guess I could just lead Rillaboom though, right? Rillaboom would allow me to fake out into Moltres. Okay, I actually don't hate Rillaboom Landris then. Hisu and Arcanine in the back. And Urshifu fourth. I don't know. Torn is not bad here, but I don't know if I really need Tailwind that much. 
And I think that Golden Goal is interesting because it can set up, but it's not very good into Empoleon or Iron Hands. It's going to be Hands and Landris. Okay. I am okay with this. It's an interesting debate for what I want to do on turn one, though. I think, like, Fake Out Landris and just Earth Power, Hands is pretty safe. We probably trade fake outs here, but I don't think that's even that bad for us. Okay, hand switches out. That makes sense. Into Sinistra, maybe? Yeah. And they're gonna Terra here immediately. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm fine with that. I'm assuming you're going Terra flying here with Landers and trying to Terra Blast. So as long as you're not Covert Cloak here, I flinch you on turn one. And then I can just pivot in Hisu and Arcanine on turn two. And then Landers can just start sludge bombing. Cool. That works. Really good damage on a Sinister, honestly. Okay, given that, I think we can just go out into Hisu and Arcanine right now. Thinking about going for the Terra, but I don't know if it's actually worth it here. I think we have really valuable defensive Terras with all of these. So, yeah, I'll go into Hisu and Arcanine, get that Intimidate off, and just go for Sludge Bomb on a Sinistro. Now Hisu and Arcanine should be very well positioned. It's going to be Scarf Landers most of the time here. But, I was going to say, it could be something like Clear Amulet. Okay, good pivot by Sinistra. They're going to swap back out into the Iron Hands once again. It's fine by me. Terra Blast comes out. Yep. Okay, into the Lander slot. So nicely done there. 164 down to 78. Uh, Slash one gets a crit there. Um, basically, I'm thinking... It's interesting. I could poison Terra just to become grounded. Uh, and then as a result, it would allow me to heal back. And enough where I might be able to survive another move. Which is a pretty big deal. Honestly, I'm really thinking about it. We also have Choice Band Head Smash here. Which would just get a one-hit knockout onto Landorus. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Poison Terra just to get the Grassy Terrain Recovery. I think if you're my opponent, you should just fake out into Hisu and Arcanine, Terra Blast into the Landorus slot. I actually don't have great switch-ins into Terra Blast right now, which is why I'm making this play. I think the other alternative I could have considered was pivoting my Hisu and Arcanine out. But with Rilla and Urshifu in the back, I'm actually really weak to Scarf Terra Blast right now, which is why I feel compelled to make this play. Yep, they got onto that slot. Not really a surprise. Terra Blast. And now we remove our flying typing. So, what that means is I am going to be able to become grounded and now become affected by Grassy Terrain to heal back. So, the main thing is I don't know how high that damage roll was earlier. Uh, Earth Power into Hands makes the most sense here. It could switch out into Galeria, Moltres, or Sinistra. I think alternatively we can angle to just try to knock out Landorus, but I don't hate going for Earth or sorry Rock Slide here, and just Earth Power. Cool, and they stay in perfect. So they Terra Blast. Let's see if that recovery was enough. If it does the same amount from last time, it will allow us to survive. And th look at that. Earth Power now gets the knockout onto Iron Hands. Rock Slide becomes single target, and that feels really good. Really interesting example of how to use Terra in a creative way. Oh. That's uh, unfortunate. Rock Slide miss though. It would have been single target choice ban. Probably just gets the KO there and seals up the game for us. So, unfortunate miss, especially because I opted for Rock Slide over Head Smash for accuracy. Ah, that actually makes it substantially more difficult. Okay, especially because Ogre Pond and, like, you can just Terra Blast and Stomping Tantrum into Hisu and Arcanine right now. In terms of terrain, do I have to work with last turn? 
Man. All right, let's think this through. You're just gonna Terror Blast here and stomping this, presumably. Um, I need to use priority with extreme speed, I think. Switch in a Rillaboom here. And I'll sacrifice Landorus. Oh, interesting. They pivot their Landorus out. Oh, that's very interesting if they end up uh, not knocking my Landorus out. Okay. Uh, the problem is now they apply with Rage Powder Pressure, but I guess Rillaboom can ignore that. Huh? It's Focus Energy Ogre Pump, but that, I think, just loses them the game. Because this just KOs, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a cool tech, but they would have been better off, honestly, just going Terror Blast and uh, attacking into the... Okay, yeah, here's the thing, though. I, n I understand their play. They likely, because they're Focus Energy, they don't have Stomping Tantrum on Ogre Pond. So Ogre Pond should just be, like, Ivy Cudgel, as well as a Grass-type attack spiky shield and focus energy and so as a result my opponent was like well i don't actually i can't do anything into hisuna arcanine here so i'm forced to switch out i think that explanation makes a lot of sense so landers is now in this awkward spot where if you commit to choice scarf terror blast well hisuna arcanine just walls that uh so i think here it's fine to just fake out into landers and then pivot actually fake out into landers and sludge bomb is just fine here yeah fake out sludge bomb Cool. I wonder if Sludge Bomb would have just KO'd Landris there, I'm not sure. I think you KO Sinistro given how much Earth Power did earlier, but it might be a damage roll. Oh my gosh, nice. Landris was an absolute beast in this game. Earth Power into Iron Hands, the Sludge Bomb into the Sinistro just now. Just does so much damage. And then getting a one-hit knockout on an Ogre Pond as well, so satisfying. So, with this endgame, happy to pivot out into Hisuian Arcanine here, and just go for Sludge Bomb once again. Yeah, it's a 1v4, obviously Landris can't really do too much, but it would have been cool for Lando I to get every KO in that game. Either way, I thought this game was really interesting. The, the main thing was the Terra play, like, it wasn't... <sighs> I think, like, I, I wish I could say I had 100% confidence on that play, but without knowing the exact damage roll of Terra Blast onto us, it... Makes it a little bit trickier, right? Because, like, I gauge that I would survive another one just based off how much the previous one did. But let's say my opponent got a really low roll with that previous Terror Blast. Then maybe uh, if they get a high roll on the second one, then it, my Terror is kind of just wasted. And in the end, it was 4 HP, right? And so I, I just figured it's a play that could just immediately win us the game. So it was worth going for uh, because the Landers committing to Scarf Terror Blast was actually really scary for my team, given that I brought Rillaboom, I brought Urshifu. Uh, we had a lot of things that were weak to the Terror Blast, and so I wanted to try to get that double knockout. The miss was pretty scary, but because they ended up being this focus energy set and try to set up on us, rather than just knocking out Landorus, Landorus was able to just basically seal up the game immediately. Okay, we've got Grimmsnarl, Chihu, Galarian, Zapdos, Fluttermane, Iron Hands, and Water Ogre Pond. Landorus, I think, is excellent here damage-wise. Gotta respect things like the Flutter Chihu combination. Uh, Tornadus has Protect here, so even if they lead with Fake Out Pressure from Iron Hands, I can just Protect and Tailwind. Against Flutter Chihu, Hisu and Arcanine's quite good. But if I lead his soon Arcanine, I can activate Defiant on Zapdos, which is scary. We don't want that to happen. I'm honestly down for a Tornadus Landorus lead here, because I can just poison Terra and start applying a lot of pressure with this on turn one, I think. Definitely want his soon Arcanine in the back. Golden Goal is a little bit awkward. I don't think it's that easy to set up in this game with it. So I don't think I want to bring that. I like Rillaboom because if they water Terra Ogre Pond, Rillaboom just takes advantage of it. I will say though, with the four that I brought, I think I'm actually fairly weak into Galarian Zapdos, so I gotta be a little bit careful about fighting that. The thing though is, even though Define is scary, if we just set up Tailwind, then I can just outpace you and damage you before you're able to even get a move off, and so the main thing is I think Rillaboom is not very strong into Zapdos, so I gotta be careful here with using it. Maybe Grim and Chi Yu. Okay. 
Hmm. I'm really curious if they have, like, Fake Out here on turn one from Grim Snarl, or if they just set up Light Screen. Could be Nasty Plot Chiyu as well. I don't hate Rain Dancing here to reduce the damage output of Fire-type attacks. Yeah, like, I honestly think Rain Dance, Poison Terra, Sludge Bomb, Grim is really cool. Okay, I'm down for that. I am at risk of Fake Out, though. Like, I guess one thing that I'm not really covering for here is if Grimstarrow does actually have Fake Out, and they go for Fake Out onto Tornadus and then just overheat onto Landorus. I think double protecting was also totally acceptable there, but... Okay, no Fake Out, no Terra. No Terra on Shiyu is actually really surprising to me. Light screen... Show me a fire type attack. Oh, okay. We're gonna move before Chiyu here. Sludge Bomb gets that one hit knockout, which is beautiful, even with Light Screen being set up. Excellent. And Heat Wave comes out perfect. Yeah, what a dream turn for us there. Rain Dance is a move that is mainly used to set up Urshifu on this team and make your Bleak Windstorms accurate, but. The amount that it puts on, the, the like there are other use cases, right? Being able to reduce the damage output there, I think, was really significant. Here, I expect Ogre Pond to go for a Terra Follow Me, uh, which then enables Hisu and Arcanine to come out later on and just click Rock Slide. I'm happy to just Tailwind here. I think Tailwind Protect this turn is fine because I want to see which one of these two Terra. I think it should be Ogre Pond. Well, let's see. Yep. Okay. Uh, what that means is I can just click Sans Through Storm this next turn. I guess the question is whether or not it's even worth going for it. But I think Bleak Wind Sans Seer, if we connect, just gets the KO. Uh, if they knock out Tornadus, it's a free switch into Rillaboom for me, which is also good. Okay, so we've set up Brain Dance, we've set up Tailwind. Just both good for us. Ivy Cudgel happens into Torn, which is fine. They didn't go for Follow Me, which is interesting. I could have gone for Earth Power there, but that's okay. That felt like Specs damage. So I'm thinking I just bring out Rillaboom now and fake out into Ogre Pond, Earth Power into Chiyu. But this is the beauty of this team, right? I think, like, it covers for so many Terras. So it's like, okay, you've Terraed, so that gets around Sludge Bomb, but now I just hit you for Super Effective with Rillaboom. Three turns of Light Screen, three turns of Tailwind for us to work with. I'm happy to just fake out, like I said, and Earth Power here into Chiyu. I'm mainly thinking if I should double into Chiyu, because Sash Chiyu could be the thing here. Heatway felt like Specs damage to me, though, because it did so much even with the rain being up. So I'm going to fake out Earth Power. Okay, no protects. Chiyu is not sashed here, and we get the one-hit knockout. That should put us in amazing shape. Beautiful. We continue to heal from Grassy Terrain. I still have Tailwind up for two turns. We're healing back from Grassy Terrain on the Landers as well, which is huge. Let's see what their last one is. Like, Rillaboom should be incredibly well positioned right now. I'm curious if it's Galarian Zapdos. I think... I think that might be. Hmm. Zapdos could still win this game for my opponent, I think. Two turns of rain, two turns of light screen. Uh... Yeah, Zapdos... Wait, Zapdos is such a big problem for us, huh? So I'd expect you to just Brave Bird here. The question is, do we think Ogre Palm protects this turn? Because you could protect and then Brave Bird into this. I 
Okay, I'm gonna Grassy Glide, Sludge Bomb Zapdos, expecting Spiky Shield. Oh, but they don't Spiky Shield or Terra. Wow. I might just lose both Mons here then. Uh, because I thought Ogre Palm was definitely gonna Spiky Shield there. Oh, almost got the KO. But it's Acrobatics instead of Brave Bird. What is your item on that? That's interesting. Okay. And then Ivy Cudgel. Wait, Acrobatics? Wow. I think if they just had Brave Bird there, that would get the KO. Uh, but basically, yeah, I made the read that you go for Spiky Shield Ogre Palm, because I could have totally just gone Grassy Glide Earth Power onto that slot. Okay, now Hisuian Arcanon comes out. Normally, Galarian Zapdos is Choice Scarfed. It does activate Defiant. <laughs> Adrenaline Orb. Oh. That is really cool. I think that actually allows my opponent to win. No, Terra's already been committed. I mean, I have extreme speed. I mean, it could just be Woodhammer here. E speed. Okay, they went for detect. Double protect here? Nope. Does Glide just knock out Zapdos is the question then? Oh, actually, we're just faster. Yeah, Tailwind is still up. So there's just KOs, right? Okay, nice. Cool. Cool Zapdos set, though. Yeah, Zapdos is actually really scary here. And the lack of uh, Protect or Follow Me with the Yogurt Pawn or Spiky Shield earlier caught me off guard. But fortunately, we have Priority Extreme Speed here. So even though we activated Defiant and the Adrenaline Orb, it's still fine. Yeah, so we just Extreme Speed now. Wait. They already Terra. Okay. <laughs> I was like, do I have to worry about a potential Ghost Terra here? But Ogre Pawn obviously terra and extreme speed delivers the finishing blow. Okay, nice. Yeah, I mean, Zapdos felt like it had to protect there, but did, did the Ogre Pond just not have protect? Because I feel like it was surprising to not really see it spiky shield throughout all those different turns. But in the end, yeah, I think uh, Zapdos was actually a pretty big problem with the Ogre Pond specifically, that combination. But... Bringing Rillaboom was really essential in this game. I think if I had brought Urshifu instead, for example, or Golden Go, I would have really struggled against Water Ogre Pond. It was really important to have the Rillaboom to be able to deal massive amounts of damage to Ogre Pond post Terra. And Landris, once again, just putting in so much work. Oh, wow. Hisuian Electrode. Okay. What does it do on this team? I use Hisuian Electrode with a, like an interesting strategy with Loaded Dice and Bullet Seed to stack up like a Nihilate. But I have really little clue as to what it's fun Like, it could explode maybe with Dusclops next to and, and Fluttermane. That's what I'm mainly thinking about. This feels like a game where Golden Go can set up. Like, it, Dust, Dustclops, Tornadus, Electro, I think Golden Go all has a favorable matchup in two. I don't know if I even want to lead Tornadus or bring it in this game, quite frankly. But I think Bleak Windstorm pressure from this is still good. I think Torn Arcanine works, but it's a little bit weak into Urshifu. Torn Arcanine, though... Golden Goal in the back. Landris is the fourth. I think Rillaboom over Landris or Urshifu over Landris might be a little bit more consistent here, honestly. Um, but with Landris not being super staple in the format slash the meta, I want to just like get more experience with it. And I think it's still decent here, right? Like It applies pressure with Sludge Bomb onto a lot of their team. The main thing is I think Landris is not going to... There are some Pokemon that can pressure with one-hit knockouts, but... I think the main thing that it struggles with in this matchup is that it's going to be slower paced than a fair amount of my opponent's team. And that would be okay if we could like, respond back with the one-hit knockout, but I think a lot of the things on their team will be able to tank a Sludge Bomber Earth Power. So we'll see. 
It's gonna be Tornadus Ogre Palm from there end though, okay? I don't mind that too much. Getting this Intimidate off immediately I think is already quite good. I would expect Ogre Palm to consider switching here, but I think this is such a good opportunity for us to just click Leak Windstorm. It's interesting, I like could actually switch out Arcanine right now. Not the other team really takes Leak Wind, quite honestly, but I, like, I could also just Normal Terra Extreme Speed or Normal Terra Rock Slide. Which means I wouldn't be able to Terra these later on in the battle. Uh, I definitely don't mind clicking Bleak Wind. I'm honestly down, yeah. I think I want to Bleak Wind, Normal Terra, and just click Rock Slide. Okay, so they're not switching out. If you're doing that, my guess is you're going Protect with, uh, or Spiky Shield with the Ogre Pond and then Tailwind turn one, which I wouldn't be too upset about. Because then I'll just knock out your Tornadus and then I'll be able to stagger Tailwind by a turn. Yep. That's fine. Unless I miss my uh, Bleak Wind here. But this just gives me an extra turn of Tailwind to work with, which I'm more than okay with. I think the idea here is essentially like, I have a lead advantage, so I want to basically push it forward. Uh, okay, that's a big miss if they have Taunt, but that's the risk of Leak Win. And we have a lot of inaccurate moves with this team, right? So you should expect to miss. Maybe this still knocks out, though. Let's see how bulky they are. Okay, nice. No, not mattering. Sweet. Choice Band Rock Slide. Yeah, so now I can just Tailwind. They bring out Flutter Main, though, so that's the thing. Like, I've given up the defense with... The Hisuian Arcanine. It's a Speed Flutter, though. Okay, Speed Flutter is actually really good to confirm, because that means your damage output is a lot less scary than something like Special Attack Booster or a Choice Spec Set. What do I want to do? You can Moonblast. like can double up on a Hisuian Arcanine right now. They probably should Terra. I can protect this turn and then Tailwind the subsequent turn. Protect. Okay, I'm going to protect Go into Golden Go here. Uh, this is a little bit risky because I think there's a decent chance they end up going for Ivy Cudgel onto the Golden Go slot. But the idea is to just stall the turn of their Tailwind and stagger my Tailwind by another turn while also baiting out their Terra. I think Golden Go is not that important in the game at this point. I mainly brought it if they wanted to lean into things like Dusclops or Electrode, for example. And they're going to fire Terra Ogre Palm, but I'm really okay seeing that because it means that I can just pivot Hisu and Arcanine back out. And I've got Landorus in the back, right? So I'm going to be two turns behind on Tailwind, but that means once I set it up, their Tailwind is going to expire. I'm going to have two extra turns of Tailwind to work with. Oh, they actually reveal Power Gem as well. Okay. Power Gem, and I assume Ivy Cudgel into the Golden Ghost slot. Huh? Okay. That was about the last move I expected. I didn't even know Ogre Pong gets Superpower. I've <laughs> really never seen that before, but okay, it ends up working out even better for us. Nice. Uh, I'm happy to just Tailwind, though. I mean, they're going to Power Gem again, right? I, I could Rain Dance here, but I think I should Tailwind just to make sure I get it up. <sighs> Rain Dance is actually interesting to consider, though, but... I think going for Tailwind and... Just Protect here is fine. Ogre Palm pivots out, okay? So, gets rid of the Intimidate from earlier. I'm going to go into Urshifu. That's fine. Yeah, that's the one thing. If I click uh, Rain Dancer, I boost Urshifu's damage output, so that's a little bit awkward. I think late game Hisuian Arcanine with extreme speed is also going to be quite good. They've got so many tech moves here, but unfortunately for my opponent, they haven't gotten a single one successfully. Superpower on Ogre Palm, Mystical Fire, and Power Gem on Flutter Maid. Oh my goodness. Well, we've got Rocky Helmet here, so if you Surging Strikes into this, you're going to be in a lot of pain. I'm happy to just click Bleak Wind now. 
and I would like to just click make it rain. Actually, I'd rather Shadow Ball here. The idea is to put Urshifu in normal Terra Extreme Speed KO range. They just attack, which is fine. The main thing is now your Tailwind is over, right? So I've got those couple of extra turns to use, which is what I was talking about earlier. So Power Gem does manage to go off. Gleek Wind comes out. Okay, connects on the Flutter main. Pretty good damage. Honestly, wonder if Make It Rain would have gotten the KO there, but... Shadow Ball. Okay, Tailwind expires critically. Good. So like I said, we've got two turns, two extra turns relative to our opponent, which is pretty critical here. So I'm happy to just click Bleak Wind once again and Shadow Ball here into Urshifu. Aqua Jet should not KO us. You could switch Urshifu back out. I think you could go for a double protect here, which is a really interesting option. Or you could just hope I miss Bleak Wind and then double up to KO Golden Go. Those are all viable options. I'm curious what moves Flutter has dropped, because if you're running Power Jam and Mystical Fire, it means you can't run all of Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, and Protect, right? So which two of those four did it give up? I think the main scary thing right now is uh, potentially missing Bleak Wind, but it double connects, which is fantastic for us. Okay, amazing. Gets a speed drop on Urshifu as well. They have Shadow Ball, but we should survive this. Yep. They could have Aqua Jetted that slot. But the lack of Aqua Jet means I get the Shadow Ball off. And what's huge here is I'm going to be able to set up Tailwind again. Because I just protect with my Tornadus this next turn. And then we get Tailwind up uh, for a second time. And then Landorus plus Hisu and Arcanine should close out the game for us now. So one thing that's really important when in a Torn versus Torn matchup is kind of figuring out how to take advantage of Staggering Tailwind. And I think we had a big advantage in this game just because of the Hisu and Arcanine lead. It put on a lot of offensive pressure and wasn't threatened too much. Sad to not see Electro though, I was really curious about its role there. So yeah, I'm happy to just protect here. Shadow Ball into Flutter. Uh, the expectation is I lose both Pokemon, um, or sorry, I lose the Golden Go here. But then I get a free switch in into Landorus and I can just Tailwind again. And Tornadus is just such a good support Pokemon. Like the fact that we can get multiple Tailwinds off in one game is kind of crazy to think about. Okay, protect, they spiky shield. Works for me. Power gem once again into Torn. Yeah. And now we just knock out the Flutter main. Cool. Like, in this position, even if they knock out Golden Go, I want that to happen because I just want the free switch back into Landorus because that just effectively deals with Ogre Pond. But what won us this game was having, I would say, one, a really good lead matchup. That already gave me a huge advantage. And then two, being able to really stagger our Tailwind effectively in this battle. So I'm going to Tailwind again. Just Shadow Ball here and then wait for the Lander to switch in. Perfect. Now it's the Lander's waiting room. We just bring it out and click Earth Power. So Ogre Palm will get a knockout here, but that's basically all it can do. Yeah, it's going to be Ivy Cudgel. A lot of cool support tech moves, though. Like, if there's any place to use these moves, uh, the online ladder where it's best of one closed team sheet is a great place because I wasn't expecting any of them, right? Super Power from Ogre Palm, Mystical Fire, and Power Gem from Flutter. Power Gem isn't that crazy on Flutter main, but it's normally seen on Choice Spec sets, not the Booster Energy sets. Because with Booster Energy Speed Booster, you want... Like, one of the best things about Speed Booster is uh, Speed Control via Icy Wind. So you'd only select Icy Wind, one of Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast, Shadow Ball, for example. Uh, now we can just Earth Power and switch Gold and go out into Hisuian Arcanine. So, yeah, like, was already not expecting to see one of the tech moves, but for it to have Power Gem and Mystical Fire is even more fascinating. But those are moves that can just single-handedly win you a game because your opponents generally won't cover for them very frequently, right? And yeah, once again, Landers is just a really effective sweeper, has so much like one hit KO pressure onto things that it hits for super effective damage. So it'll deliver the finishing blow here into Ogre Pond and uh, get us another win. So yeah, I think the main thing in this game was me switching out Hisuian Arcanine because if they had just superpower and I stayed in there, that could have been really bad for 
From my end, I wanted to respect something like Moonblast from Fairy Terra or Fire Ogre Pod Ivy Cudgel plus Moonblast double up on an Arcanine. Because I was like, Arcanine is a really effective late game closer with this team. Whereas um, the Golden Go is less important since I don't really see too many opportunities to set up with Nasty Plot. Uh, but it worked out even better for us because they had all these surprise moves and ended up not being able to get too much value out of them. So I think I was just covering for like the safe regular option, but it could have been a complete disaster if I stayed in with Hisu and Arcanine and got caught off guard by that superpower. So uh, that turn in itself, I think, was really critical. Okay, we've got Trick Room here with Indity Armor Rouge, as well as Torkoal Grim Slowbro. And Blood Moon. Hmm. Not gonna really be able to deny Trick Room here. I think we probably want to cons consider a combination of. Uh, there is Rain Dance on Torn, which actually makes it an interesting option. I think, like, Grim Slowbro or Indity Slowbro are the leads that make the most sense here. So I, I like the idea of Golden Go to just start clicking Nasty Plot. Um, honestly, Golden Go Landorus feels good with Rillaboom in the back. Do I want Hisu and Arcanine as the last one? Intimidate's really not that great here. I'm thinking about bringing Tornadus just for Rain Dance. Which is an interesting consideration. Might honestly be worth it. Okay. I don't know. Should I bring Urshifu instead? Okay. I'm going with Urshifu. I think Rain Dance is good. I'm just trying to figure out how I would properly position Tornadus to like get Rain Dance off. And so yeah, I think you could make a really good argument for it. I was just a little bit worried about like damage output if I bring Tornadus and Urshifu is a substantially stronger attacker. Okay, it's gonna be Slowbro and Grim. Perfect. So the idea is like, yeah, this lead is pretty scary in terms of setting up Trick Room, but you don't apply very much offensive pressure. The other thing is I think like Landers applies huge amounts of pressure onto both of these right now. I'm happy to just Nasty Plot and Earth Power Slowbro turn one. I think you probably Light Screen Trick Room here. It's gonna be a Terra, okay. But the main thing is, you're still not applying too much offensive pressure, right? Like, Grim plus Slowbro is just really passive. Uh, Water Terra is a great Terra for them to have here, though. But now we've got you, gotten you to commit your Terra, which is big. Yep, they set up Light Screen. But what I'm going to do is basically play passive. I could have gotten the one-hit knockout on a Grim on turn one, right? I have Make It Rain, I have Sludge Bomb, I have Poison Terra Sludge Bomb. That still does so much damage through Light Screen. Oh my goodness. Okay, we Nasty Plot up. And Trick Room goes up. Cool. Not a bad turn one. With Dragon Terra on Golden Go, we should be very well positioned right now. Oh, it's Room Service. That's cool. I wonder if that there's like some self weakness policy activation strat going on here then. In this spot I'm happy to nasty plot again. I mean does Grim set up reflect or does it just parting shot here? Cause I could attack with the golden go this turn, but I like the idea of nasty plot and protect with Landers here actually. And I think if Grim stays in this turn, like we burn a turn of Trick Room and it puts us in a really good spot. Uh, and by going for Protect here, it means you can't Parting Shot Landorus and switch out. Oh my gosh. I did not see that coming. Fortunately for us, we have Dragon Terra on Golden Go, so I can just Dragon Terra this next turn with it. Uh, Shadow Ball to KO you and then switch this out. And I'll go out into Urshifu. I don't even, I mean, I don't think at plus two it would have knocked out Golden Go, but that was really scary. Like, they can go for Swagger again. That's so cool. I would have never expected that strategy. I was like, you don't have any offensive pressure with this combo. We're totally fine. 
But uh, that totally caught me off guard. Wow. Okay. The good thing for us here is with fake out pressure from Rillaboom, um, it'll be pretty easy to stall out Trick Room at this point. Right? We already burned a turn. Gonna get a knockout this turn. I wonder if Mega Rain would have just knocked out. Probably, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, also, critically, they did not go for Swagger. Are they Spirit Breaking Golden Go here? That would be a sick play. Oh, that's a terrible defense drop. Okay, they did Spirit Break, but onto the Lander slot. So we'll get the knockout onto Slowbro. I have to be careful, though, because of that defense drop and Spirit Break from the Grimmsnarl being super effective. It's actually quite scary. But I think what probably happens is I protect Golden Go this turn. Urshifu might consider pivoting out. I don't know how much Spirit... Okay, they bring out Indy, though. I think that is really good for us to see and going to put my opponent in a really tough spot. Because there's two turns of Trick Room, so effectively what I do here is Protect. Switch into Rillaboom. And then I just fake out Grimmsnarl, make it rain the next turn. So uh, if Grimms does not switch out, which it doesn't here, then I think this game should be effectively over. And we know Grimm's not switching out because Urshifu switched out first and switching is in order of speed. And with Trick Room being up right now, Grim would be faster than us. Perfect. Spare Break, yep. I guess it could theoretically be like Covert Cloak on the Grim. So that's the one thing that could save my opponent right now, but we just click Fake Out plus Make It Rain here. Really cool. Self Swagger was one of the most popular strategies in VGC over a decade ago in 2012 when Ray Rizzle won the 2012 War Championships. He won with self swagger, and pe people would use like swagger on things like Cresselia and Thunderous to not only disrupt the opposing side but use it in combo with something like Lumberry, for example. So we're at plus four, last turn of Trick Room. Yeah, I'm just gonna click Make It Rain here and fake out onto Grim. Indeed, he switches out, but whatever is coming in is taking a plus four Make It Rain. If it actually is Covert Cloak Grimmsnarl, this game becomes really interesting. Um, I'm not sure Spirit Break would even KO the Golden Gold, though. And yeah, it's not Covert Cloak. Cool. So we get a Make It Rain. Knocks out Grim. Good damage and Armor Rouge. And I can just pivot Rillaboom out and back in. I think, like, they just didn't really have too much offensive pressure. The Slowbro strat was cool, but getting that one turn incorrectly with Swagger just completely set them back in this game. They could have targeted Golden Go there, but I, I don't know. Even if they targeted Gold, I guess what's interesting, if you target Golden Go on the first turn, then the next turn you can target Golden Go with Spirit Break again. And that would probably have been their best line to take in this one. Like, you need to just apply pressure and try to get a knockout. The hard part for my opponent is the guessing game of, do I knock out Golden Go or do I knock out the Landorus, right? Okay, so it's Indy Armor Rouge now. Psychic Seed on the Armor Rouge. Okay, you don't see that every day. That's interesting. Uh, we've got Landorus. We've got Urshifu. They still have Light Screen for a couple turns. I'm at plus three. I think I'm happy to just click Make It Rain here. And Woodhammer into the Indity slot. Okay. They don't go for any Protects. No switches. I mean, they can't switch, obviously. Uh, no Protects, which is critical. Make it rain almost just gets the knockout onto both, and one hammer just knocks out Indy. Perfect. Cool. Now Armourouge can get an expanding force off, but Psychic Seed is interesting. You just like don't put on nearly as much offensive pressure as something like a Life Orb set, so I'm happy to see that, honestly. Allows them to survive for longer, but the survival doesn't matter if you're not going to deal enough damage to KO me, right? And so you can see, like, with Life Orb, maybe you can come closer to getting those knockouts, but without it, both Pokemon just survive pretty easily. Their best bet would have been protecting this, and then if Armourouche had Trick Room, setting up Trick Room with that. 
But this is an example of a matchup where I just accept that Trick Room is going to go up and realize that I have a lot of tools to utilize it. I think one of the things is if you look at my opponent's team, what are your safe Trick Room setups, right? It's something like Indy Armor Rouge, Indy D Slowbro, or Grim Snarl Slowbro, and I think all of those Golden Go can take advantage of. Um, for example, if they went Indy D Armor Rouge, I would have probably pivoted Landorus out straight into Rillaboom, set up Grassy Terrain, and then just start going for uh, Fire Terra Nasty Plot, or sorry, Dragon Terra Nasty Plot with the Golden Go, and then go from there. So, uh, we're not going to be able to deny Trick Room in a match like this often, but that's okay because we have so many tools to work with, including leftovers, including fake out pressure from Rillaboom, and, and including a lot of damage. But it's a really cool strategy with the Self Swagger. I've not seen that at all in this format. Okay, this is one of the teams that I just featured on the channel. It got top four at a regional tournament over in Australia. And in my opinion, it's just one of the best teams you can use to climb the ladder, um, partially because it has so many strong spread moves, and so you apply a lot of offensive pressure with everything. So the main thing to know about that team is that you've got Choice Scarf on the Reggie Drago, so definitely want to show respect to that option. There's obviously Trick Room as well. Uh, Scarf Drago is actually pretty hard to fight against, I think. So we're going to want like Golden Go on Rillaboom probably for it. Got to respect the Entity Armor Rouge combo as well. Um, as well as Lilik and Torkoal, but we have Rain Dance on Torn, which would shut that down pretty easily. I think I'm going to go Torn Golden Go, actually. With Rillaboom in the back. I think Landers is the fourth. So, basically, the theory behind Torn Golden Goal is this has a pretty good matchup into all their main combos. Other than an Ursa Luna coming out immediately, but I think that's normally not very common with that team. So, like I mentioned, I just played with the team my opponent is using on the channel. And I think it's a really powerful team. But I have an inherent advantage having used the team before and knowing its sets. Especially Choice Scarf on Reggie Drago. I think knowing that it's Scarf Drago gives you a huge advantage. It's gonna be Indy and Armor Rouge, okay. Uh, this is interesting. Golden goes in a pretty good spot. I can switch in Rillaboom to change the terrain as well. I can also Rain Dance to reduce the damage output of the Heat Wave from Armor Rouge. If I were my opponent, I would consider Helping Hand Heat Wave. I would consider Trick Room Heat Wave. You could Psychic Terror Expanding Force as well. Follow me, Trick Room also works. <sighs> okay, I'm thinking Rain Dance and uh, Nasty Plot. Cool. This works. They're going Protect Trick Room, but that's fine because I get boosted up. I also set up Rain Dance, but one thing to respect is obviously them switching into Torkoal out the next turn. I think one other thing to respect is Armor Rouge Psychic Terra, helping hand expanding force. Given that, I think I might actually just double protect this next turn to see what they want to do. Because I want to... I think here you consider a bunch of different plays. I think you could switch Entity out into Torkoal and then click Heat Wave. You could help me hand expanding for Psychic Terra. And if they if that's the line that they take, that's totally fine. Because what I can do then is pivot and Rillaboom the next turn for Tornadus. So yeah, they're going to commit to the Psychic Terra option, which is fine. I think the main thing to think about is, do I want to potentially respect NDD going on into Torkoal next turn and uh, going for a Heat Wave play? Uh, the counter play that I would have to that would be going for the Dragon Terra. And I think Dragon Terra is probably just worth going for on Golden Go because I don't think anything else really needs to Terra in this matchup. Cool. The main awkward thing about Dragon Terra is that it uh, means that I no longer resist Expanding Force. But I think this turn I really do want to respect Indy going out into Torkoal and Heat Wave coming out. So I'm going to pivot in Rillaboom to change the terrain. I'm going to Terra here and then make it rain. And make it rain also just covers for Follow Me from Indy. Uh, so they're not going to switch. Which is fine. It just means that they might get a Helping Hand single target uh, Psychic into Golden Go, but with no terrain, uh, it's not nearly as scary here. 
Ideally, they go for follow me here. That would be my dream. Or Heat Wave. That would be awesome. But, yeah, I think this was the main debate. I I, I just think let Inity switch into Torkoal there is something I would do if I were in my opponent's shoes. And I don't want to just lose Golden Go, right? Because that would change the weather back, and then they would Heat Wave, and that's just a complete nightmare. Here, even though they're going for a Helping Hand Expanding Force, we should still survive the turn. And especially if they didn't target correctly. Oh, they targeted the Torn slot. That's even better for us. Nice. Okay, given how much it did, though... Oh, interesting. It's not the Life Orb set. Okay, so it's actually... Whoa, Citrus Berry. Slight deviation, but also seeing how much it did, I think Golden Go actually would have fainted there. So, I'm actually... Given that, I'm not sure I love how I play this game. Yeah. Uh... Expanding Force is still still just a beast of a move. I, I want to do that damage calc after this game, because I think I was just kind of off with that, which is a little silly for me to mess up on. Fortunately, it ended up not mattering, but I think if that went into Golden Go, that could have been a disastrous turn if it KOs, which it might. I would expect it to, given that Rilla has the Assault Vest here. It still did that much damage. Okay. Uh, I can fake out Armor Rouge now. I mean, Armage probably protects here. It's fine. Probably to just fake out Nasty Plot again. And the reason a Nasty Plot here is because I want to intentionally deny my opponent a free switch into whatever they have in the back. And they go for a double protect, so that's totally okay. The one thing that we want to respect this next turn is my opponent clicking Trick Room with both Pokemon. If they do that, they'll be able to reverse Trick Room and then set it up again for a full five turns. So, to get around that, I'm going to protect Golden Go and then I just attack with Rillaboom onto one of the slots. Because uh, once Trick Room is over from that side of the field, I think Golden Go just kind of dominates completely in this matchup. Okay, everyone heals back. Just confirm the board state. Last turn of Rain, last turn of Trick Room. You just protect with both Mons. I'm happy then to just Grassy Glide into D and protect here. And I want to protect just because of the Helping Hand Expanding Force play they could make into Golden Go. Like I said, that would likely just get the knockout given how much it did into Rillaboom. Yeah, I honestly underestimated how much that would do without Psychic Terrain being up. But it means that maybe I needed a different strategy going into this game. Because if Golden Go does faint there, this match looks very different. And he just goes for follow me. Okay, cool. We just want to make sure they don't get Trick Room up again in this game. As long as that doesn't happen, Golden Ghost should just dominate. Okay, Entity feigns, and now even if I lose Rillaboom, they can't set up Psychic Terrain up again, so that's the most important part of all of this. And the Expanding Force on top. Golden Ghost, perfect. Okay, great. Rain stops, but Golden Ghost is so boosted up. Wait. I'm about to get Reggie drago Oh. Okay, hold on. Dragon energy kind of clears the field right now, no? Wait, it totally does if this is the Scarf Drago set, which it should be. Um... Do I just give up both Mons here, I think? And then win the game with Tornadus Landris? That feels acceptable. I could go for a double protect here. Yeah, and even if I don't get it, it's fine. Maybe it's worth switching out there. Yeah, like, late game Scarf Drago is actually in a really good spot right now. If you actually just... Oh, it's so fascinating. If they actually click Trick Room here, that might work in their favor, even though it's Scarf Drago. I think the way they positioned Drago in this game was very nicely done. Um, and I should not have protected with Golden Go. I should have just attacked. I was just worried about the Helping Hand play. But, okay, they click Expanding Forest. So, oh, this is going to be such an interesting endgame. If, if, okay, if you're my opponent, you know what you should do? You should Dragon Energy 
And you should Trick Room. Man, the bulk on Armourge with the Citrus Berry has been really impressive. Uh, I also, like, don't know if Dragon Energy knocks out either here without a boost on Drago. So I'm thinking I can just Bleak Windstorm. Because I really don't want Armourge to set up Trick Room here. So the question is, do we think Dragon Energy knocks out Landers in one shot? Because essentially what I can do here is Bleak Wind Storm and Sandseer Storm. Alright. I think we survived Dragon Energy. Armor switches as well, okay. Into Ursaluna, yeah. I think the game boils down to this turn. Does it KO the uh, Landorus? Nice. Huge. We still have to hit our moves, I guess. Bleak Wind connects, though, which is good. Okay. And Sandsteer connects. Perfect. Uh, I could still lose, though, to misses. I wonder... I, mean, I could have gone Tailwind Earth Power, but basically the reason I didn't want to do Tailwind Earth Power is if I were my opponent, like I said, I would have actually considered Dragon Energy and Trick Room. Um, and I think that's a really scary play. Armourish comes back out. I could still lose off missing right now, though, I think, basically. Oof. Uh, if you're my opponent, the other question is, do you consider protecting and attacking with something? Basically, I want to just Earth Power Armourish and Bleak Wind, but they could protect armor here. Okay, they don't protect, and Bleak Wind doesn't miss. Nice. Uh, we just needed either one of those to happen, like, because if you don't protect there, I guess unless Ursaluna has a spread move that hits both Pokemon, like, you can only knock out one of the two options there, so. Yeah, they positioned Scarf Drago very nicely in this game, but the little bit of chip damage that we got from Grassy Glide meant that I could make that play with more confidence, and we were able to get the knockouts, but, yeah. I think the main turn I'm thinking about in this game was, uh, up against the Golden Go with the... Uh, potential expanding force play and the life orb expanding force option into us there. And that could have been really bad if Golden Gold just fainted because it was. Golden Gold was so important in these trick room matchups because it essentially like soaks up damage, boosts its stats, and then puts on a lot of offensive pressure as well. But if it just goes down immediately, you're really, really far behind. So fortunately, that did not happen in this one. Okay, I had to pull up the damage calc because I was wondering how the expanding force would have played out if it went into Golden Gold. But first, against Rillaboom. Now, the Helping Hand Expanding Force did 148 damage to us, and that is basically the highest maximum roll that they could have gotten with that combination. What's really interesting is, against Golden Go with the EV spread that we have, it's actually never a guaranteed knockout with Expanding Force. That makes me feel a little bit better. That being said, the original version of this team did have Life Orb rather than Citrus Berry on Armor Rouge. So, for example, if you throw Life Orb into the mix as well, and at that point we had not seen the item being confirmed, then it is a knockout onto us. And in my head, I was thinking we would survive even with Life Orb, honestly, and so that was a bad assumption. The upside is without Life Orb, then we are actually guaranteed to survive without chip damage onto it, which is really nice. But that explains why Rillaboom took more damage than I was expecting, because it was just the maximum possible roll that they could have gotten with Expanding Force there. So I wanted to do that calc because I was personally really curious. Okay, we are up against basically the original version of this team, which has, of course, the Fluttermane as well as the Champau over Landorus and Golden Go. So, let's see. How do I want to approach this? I think Champau is pretty scary. And when you're playing slight mirror matches, you want to think about what makes your teams different. If I were my opponent, I'd consider leading, like, Torn Champau, but his soon Arcanine just clears that. I generally like Torn Arcanine, I think. Lando is really interesting. It does a lot of damage. And puts on pressure against their Hisu and Arcanine. It's also a question of, I don't know the um, Champau moveset. Like, do you have Crunch? Because Golden Go could be really good. Like, I personally want to go Torn, Arcanine, Golden, Gold, Landorus, and bring the two things that are different from our teams. I don't know if Golden Gold is the smartest idea here. 
Could be Rillaboom over it. Yeah. Actually, the more I think about it, the more I don't like Golden Go. It's just hard to see it really getting set up easily. I don't know, though. I think the thing about Golden Go is if they lead Hisuian Arcanine and they commit to an attack with it early, Golden Go can be in a really good spot because you can just switch it in Nasty Plot. Um, Like, switch Arcanine into Golden Go, protect Tornadus turn one, and then, like, Tailwind, Nasty Plot turn two, and then go from there. Uh, they do just go Torn Urshifu, though. Okay. Hmm. Obviously, there's Surging Strikes pressure into Hisu and Arcanine right now. You could just Rain Dance Surging Strikes, which is really scary, but we could switch in Rillaboom. I don't mind going for Bleak Wind here, I think, and then pivoting into Rillaboom. Nice lead by them, though. I was hoping to catch really anything other than Urshifu out here on turn one. And the lead isn't even that bad, right? Because I can make this pivot. But yeah, it's like Golden Go, for example, with Torn would have been a nice lead into this because I can just go for Dragon Terra, Nasty Plot, turn one. But Bleak Wind still does a ton of damage, right? Like one thing I could even consider was normal Terra Extreme Speed Bleak Wind, but I don't mind just starting the game off with Bleak Wind. However, it means a miss on Urshifu could be really scary. They also might Terra here and, and get rid of the super effective hit. Let's see. Okay, it is going to be a Terra from their end. On to Urshifu, yep. But now Grassy Glide just clears that, so that's good. Curious if it's like Rain Dance Surging Strikes. Rain Dance Surging Strikes into Tornadus could be pretty scary here. But it's gonna be Tailwind, okay? Let's see if you targeted Torn or Rillaboom. Okay, nice target into Torn. And the downside is I didn't Tailwind here, so. It's a roll, I think, as to whether or not this KOs, but looks like they've done enough where, unless I get lucky here, it's enough to KO. Ah, uh, so it would have been, if I just clicked Tailwind on turn 1, that trade is actually super worth it, because the helmet damage, but I'm not so sure it is worth it based on how that turn played out. Good targeting by my opponent. Life Orb Urshifu, oh, that's interesting, okay. Very interesting. Well, I can bring Hisu and Arcanine now. We've got normal Terra E-Speed with this, which is good. This turn is interesting, because it's like... I'm already behind in this game. Yes, the, the Life Orb actually is what changes the damage calc so that you get that knockout onto Tornadoes. Because if it's Mystic Water, you do just a little bit less damage and we would survive. So... That uh, adaptation of using Life Orb is actually huge for my opponent. <sighs> like, I want to fake out Rockside here and predict that Urshifu protects. But I could also just Grassy Glide Rock Slide. I'm gonna read that Urshifu protects. Nice. That was that was really risky, but I don't know. I'm already behind in this game, so I think this turn gives me a huge path back into it. Okay, Rocky Helmet. Nice. And uh, the main thing in going for this is I conserve my Terra with Rillaboom. Okay, Rock Slide connects. Perfect. And it gets the knockout onto Torn. Good. Main thing to think about is that my opponent's already committed their Terra on Urshifu, so you can't tear anything else defensively. I have Glide Pressure with Rillaboom still onto your Urshifu, but you can bring out Hisu and Arcanine for an Intimidate right now. They bring out their Rillaboom, okay. I guess that's not great to see, right? Because they should fake out into my Rillaboom right now, and then Surging Strikes into Hisu and Arcanine. Even if I Terra this, it should faint. I think what I do here is just click Rock Slide. I'm going to switch Rillaboom out into Landorus, and what this allows me to do is bring out my Rillaboom, and then Cycle Fake out once again. But, yeah. The, uh, the Life Orb is what really caught me off guard here, because as a result, I did not click Tailwind with the Torn. 
And that just means that I'm playing slower than my opponent for this game, which doesn't feel great. So, even if you're using the same standard 6, like, a single item choice can drastically change how things play out, right? Yeah, so it's fake out surging strikes here, that's not really too much of a surprise. <laughs> it's so crazy to just see it get a knockout in one hit. But obviously, it's like 4 times super effective and you've got the life orb boost and everything, but still, it's just kind of wild to think about. Okay, uh, what's also critical is timing grassy terrain right now. What I mean by that is there's two turns left. Like, I want to Poison Terra this Sludge Bomb Rillaboom. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna glide into Urshifu. Poison Terra, Sludge Bomb. And I'm gonna glide this time because I revealed the Fake Out play last time, so now my opponent might think I'm gonna double up onto Rillaboom and might get greedy and try to attack with Urshifu. If they did that, we would just knock them out. They could also consider switching Urshifu out right now, I think. Uh, my other question is the item on their Rillaboom. Is it Assault Vested? Maybe it was wor reading and worth reading into Urshifu uh, protecting here. And then, like, double up onto Rillaboom with Glide plus Sludge Bomb. Nice, okay. Made the right read here. Yep, they don't go for... And that's what I mean, right? Like, if I had gone for the same play like I did against Tornadus earlier, then they could kind of punish that tendency. Um, and they would just search and strike Slanders and win the game there immediately. Perfect. They would hammer. <sighs> Still so much damage, my goodness. But the Poison Terror allows us to survive, and I get Sludge Bomb off. So now my question is, what is their final Pokemon? Get the one-hit knockout. Perfect. Bye-bye. Back for grassy terrain. Tailwind Peter's out. Last turn of grassy terrain right now for us. So they can protect a stall it out. Oh, I think they're going to win this game by 1 HP. And the me reason for this is because I needed one extra turn of grassy terrain. Oh, man. GG. That was really close. It's, it's not over. I mean, it could be Life Orb Champ power, right? Okay, wait, no, no. I could still definitely win this, but uh, I think here... You can just Wood Hammer and Earth Power. They should protect. Yeah. Oh, so basically, now the question is, are you focused, Sash? You should be, because Life Orb was committed on Urshifu, so I'd be shocked if it weren't Sash Champ Pao. And if you're Sash Champ Pao, what you do is just target Rillaboom. I, th I can't see it being any other item here is the thing. Like, there's no reason for Sash to be on anything else, really. I mean, it could be on Flutter or Torn, theoretically, but... It just makes the most sense here, and Urshifu not being Sash was already confirmed. Unless I, like... Survive an Ice-type attack onto Rillaboom. I could also hope towards them messing up and targeting Landorus and protecting. That would actually just win me the game. But Crash into Rillaboom effectively should seal it up, and I can't Poison with Sludge Bomb either because of our ability. It should be Sash, that's why I'm actually thinking about protecting here. But I guess they could miss Ice School Crash as well, so we'll see. Okay, it is Crash, it is into Rillaboom, and it connects, so that's a one-hit knockout. And I think we're going to bring Shampao down to 1 HP, but they'll end up closing it out. Oh, super close game, but yeah, I think the main thing here was uh, my Tornado is just getting very little value on turn one, and good targeting by them to knock out Torn, and them having the Life Orb to give them a little bit of extra damage they needed to get the KO, so really good game here. Nicely done by my opponent, good execution. Uh, my lead was to cover for everything else they could have led, basically, but Torn Urshifu specifically meant that Arcanine was in a bad spot, and there's a lot of different counterplay to it, one being as they just sucker punch us there. Uh, I guess I could have tried to play around the Sucker Punch mind game and like waste all their Sucker Punch PP and then hope they miss High School Crash. So that was actually a possible endgame. 
But all they had to do is call one turn right out of like 12 <laughs> in order to win that end game. But it eh, probably still worth at least going for a couple turns to, yeah, uh, create those mind games. Um, so, yeah, I think the main thing is I could have just had a different lead in this game, right? Against Torn Urshifu, for example. Like, Golden Go is a unique option. Um, I think Golden Go is a little scary to bring into this matchup because it's weak to Champau both pre and post Terra. But I think it makes some sense here. I also think we could have considered Rillaboom as a lead, like Rillaboom Tornadus is interesting because it puts on Fate God Pressure and Grassy Glide Pressure onto the um, Urshifu slot, uh, so I think that would have been viable. I didn't end up setting up Tailwind in that game, I essentially just lost Tornadus for nothing, and uh, to me, I would mainly point to the lead matchup being subpar and my opponent being able to take good advantage of that. So yeah, if I were to replay that, I'd mainly focus on leading a little bit more. But it's interesting, right? Because it's like, Torn, Hisu, and Arcanine covers for almost anything else they could have led, but they just happen to, have, like, bring the best counter into it and make the right play on turn one as well and have a surprise item of life form. And all of that adding up basically allowed them to get, I'd say, a pretty decent advantage in that early game. So, yeah. Trying to think uh, where else I could have done better. Like, my opponent kind of pinned me into a tough spot early on. And the reality is that the life orb surging strikes just does so much damage. And them, me knocking out Tornadus and giving them an opportunity to switch in was also bad. So I think one other thing I actually could have considered was normal Terra, Hisu, and Arcanine, and fake out Tornadus, extreme speed into the Tornadus, predicting Urshifu to detect, then extreme speed into the um, Urshifu slot the next turn. Because Urshifu was kind of the big problem, right? If I Terra'd my Hisu and Arcanine, Eastby would have been able to put in a lot of work against my opponent's team. Um, but what my opponent did really well was conserving Champau for the end game, because I think a well-played and well-conserved Champau can do super well into this team, given how much offensive pressure it can apply. And you can see, right? Like, I had the Focus Sash, and that's all that it needed in order to survive an attack and knock out both my Pokemon. So, yeah. Anyway, though, that's going to be it for this episode. So thanks so much, as always, for watching. I was really happy to have good showcases with Landorus in particular, because I think it's a fairly unique Pokemon. And seeing it get a uh, one-hit knockout, for example, onto Rillaboom was really satisfying in this game. And it's just really powerful across the board into a lot of teams and can force out uh, you kind of Terras and then be able to knock things out post-Terra. So, yeah, I think that... The Tornadus archetype is not going to go anywhere in the next month as we wrap up this format. So it's something that you should either try out or learn how to beat if you're, you know, going up against it and using a team like this and just getting experience with it, I think can help you on both ends of that spectrum. So appreciate you all as always for watching. We like you enjoy and I'll see you all soon. All right. Peace.